Hello there, Matt Roll64 here and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Last time we explored the Eastern Palace and we got the Pegasus boots. Well they're called the Pe Pegasus shoes in this version but the GBA version we changed them to Pegasus boots. Which actually makes more sense. But here first let's take a look at the map our destination is over here but we actually need an item to pass through and I happen to know where that item is there's also another item actually I might get the item I'm thinking no I'll do it after there's two items I want one we actually don't need until much later in the game, but it helps to have it. Well, at least in, no, it, I think it is one of both of them are mandatory, but one we actually do not need right now. That's what I was trying to say. And I forgot to mention that the GBA version, when you get the bow in the GBA version, you get 10 free arrows, by the way. And again, I should ex elaborate more than the GBA version, I feel, because I did explain the version differences, but I don't think I ex explained them very well. Or, and also, it doesn't really make, make much sense when I say that the GBA version is superior, and yet I am playing on the Super Nintendo. Well, to be fair, I'm playing on the Super Nintendo because, well, I don't know, just nostalgia, I suppose. That said, you can use this as a guide for the GBA version if you want. I'm not bothered. You can if you want. The GBA version version actually there's a question mark on the subscreen and the subscreen actually does not fills up the entire screen. If what I'm saying makes sense. <laughs> but I'm planning on, on a bonus episode with the GBA ver version, GBA version, so you can see the differences then. And but anyway, we need to go in here because we need to knock a book down. We couldn't get this earlier. Now we can. Although to be fair, I should have showed it off earlier to make. That make more sense, but it's called the Book of Medora, which allows us to read the ancient text of Hylia. I don't know why the Hylians are ancient even beings, even though Link is one. That doesn't really make much sense, but oh well. And this guy's had a quarrel. Where's his younger brother? To the daughter's room. I'm sorry, but I need to get past to your little through, so there we go. Okay, so the door is wait is open again, okay. Right. Is he still angry? Well, he must be angry if he still the door, although I think that's a little it's not really extreme, but it's a little extreme. A little. Now we have to get through and I'm probably doing it all the wrong, the wrong, completely the wrong way. And I think I just messed up badly. Yeah, I fucked up. <laughs> oh. Damn it. Oh well. I usually get that perfectly on time. Although I, my path through the maze was a little convoluted. I like, um. Most people. There's a proper quick way through, but unfortunately, from the top of my head, I actually can't remember how to do it. <laughs> so. Oh no. We'll go for there. 
Oh god, please don't tell me I am going to lose. And yeah, I am, because I actually can't remember the fuck to go. Oh. God damn it. This so annoys me. I can do this easily. Usually. But now that I'm recording, I can't do it. Horrifying. 14 seconds. Thank God. Now, do not fall off the bloody cliff. Please, do not. But anyway, we've got another piece of heart. Like I said in the beginning of DLP, this is not going to be 100%, but however, I something I didn't mention at the start of the, start of the LP is that I can get pretty damn close to 100%. Pretty damn close. Last time I played, I had about 18 hearts. That was about either one or two heart, heart pieces away from 19. Also, that something I'm also going to mention now is that there's one item I am definitely going to miss. The Staff of Biner. Briner. Two reasons. One, I can't remember where the hell it is. I've got it before. And two, I, last time I found it, I never really found a use for it. I actually didn't. It's probably useful in like one or two rooms. But I never really found a use for it. So. There you go. That's my reason why I'm not going to bother that item. Got another heart, and I'm going, definitely going to get the magic cape because that is a very helpful item. Really is. Oh yeah, I can't. I forgot. I don't have a certain item that I need to lift that up. There's someone else is going to say as so. well. Oh yeah, and something about the GBA version version is that the Ice Palace is different in the GBA GBA version. The last part, the, the last puzzle before the boss, is completely different, and I will cover that cover that in a bonus episode. That is what I plan on. That's plan a uh, bonus episode I plan on doing. And I should mention I got Skyward Sword actually, and that is a fantastic game. No, I can't. No. I forgot I couldn't swim yet, but I do know how I'm gonna get up. I want to get this now because until I, something I've actually been watching H C H C Bailey's Let's Play of this game, and I actually, although to be fair, I'm not using it as a guide right now. I'm actually actually beat the game quite a few about three times before I, I watched his Let's Play, and I never knew that you can actually kill. No, actually, I'll leave that. I'll shut that off in a bit, because, oh my god, that is just so awesome. So, yeah, I am. hopefully I remember that I'm not going to spoil what I'm getting this item now for. Although, to be fair, it didn't have to surprise me. God damn it. Oh, wait. Stay in one place, you little shit. Yeah. I could use some bombs, but that would be too easy, you know. Too easy. Oh, wrong. 
protection. Thank you for dying. Bloody things. Hate them so much. You have a thief here. Take some rupees. Wow, we. Ten arrows. Red rupee. Red rupee. Bloody hell, I think I'm gonna max out very soon already. Well, to be fair, that's one thing I really love about Skyro's sword. Rupees are useful. They are useful. In the other games, you never really needed them except for one or two items, and if you ever needed supplies. But then again, after the same time, says supplies, you tend to get quite a few, often from enemies. In this game, rupees are actually somewhat useful. And I just missed one, never mind. Oh crap, that hurts. Yeah, watch out for them crabs. Because they don't have hurt if they hit you. And these are now a deceased crab. I'm sorry, I had to. I really had to. It's just one of those jokes that you just cannot avoid. I think everyone says it though. Then again, same with took an arrow in the end. Furious, outraged, sick of anger. Oh, I love gear him for that. Oh, the two fair. I've only on Elden Volcano, and I've heard that he does even more silly stuff. But anyway, we got the ice rod. Apparently, he even sings his own own theme tune. He hums his own bloody theme tune for what I read on TV tropes. Although I kind of bought the story for myself, kind of, but I, by the time I get to that point, I probably would have forgot the red spoilers. And god damn it, you fucking things. Oh, god. Like I said, those crabs, they're probably the strongest enemy you'll will meet for a while, because they hit you like a bloody mountain. It helps. Oh. No comment. Just no comment. That's all I can say. It's no fucking comment. Oh, Jesus Christ. How? Why even? God damn it. Ah, oh, maybe I should stop fighting those things, or attempting to fight those things, but Jesus Christ. That's probably the first time I've ever died to a crab. To a lowly fucking crab. No, I think I got killed by one once. That from me, or as uh, was my aiming is just absolutely horrid. But anyway, we got more bombs if only we could increase our amount of bombs we could carry and yes I just stole something from HC uh, HC Bailey to me don't really I don't have enough I'm trying to think of something else to say. I must m While people complain about the controls of the DS Elders, I like them. They work. In fact, what's pretty funny is I tried to hack that actually changed change the control scheme to, scheme to buttons. And it didn't even. And I'm going to be honest. Those controls were pretty shite. In the most funniest, fun in the most, ah, oh, I don't know, just hilariously ironic. I find it. It's just half problem is there was no button to really talk to people. 
or interacting with anything, so you end up using the touch screen anyway. But anyway, this guy, if he talked to him earlier, he would have told us to get the book of Medora. But he looks very familiar, doesn't he? he looks like Saha. That's because that is because he is Saha's brother. Agina, I think he's called. I think he probably would have told you if you got the if you talk to him before you get the book of Medora. But I'm not sure because I've never done that yet. He plays a vital role in the Bandai Satella View only sequel. He plays a major role in that. In that. There's vultures, but don't bother killing the vultures because really they're shit and mudman pretty easy to kill somewhat. Oh, I just said don't bother killing them and already I look at what I'm doing, I'm trying to kill one. But anyway, to open the way to go forward, make a wish here and it'll be granted. And I can see in the vulture wing in the thing here. Although, to be fair, he has. Link has. yellow hair. No. yellow. blonde hair. hair in the. what was it, brown? <coughs> in the official artwork. And the sprite he has. um. pink. for some strange reason. Although, it's probably because he. his hair would probably. blend in with some of the tiles. And we have a eye laser. Ow. Those thing those things we can elude them later. We have levers and never new enemy. <coughs> no look, our favourite playmate is back. The Cyclops. Ow. Nope, he's not in an angle, the right angle for me. There's that lever got in my way at the wrong place at the wrong time. Although what I said about that said hack of Phantom Marglass, that's probably got quite a few Zelda fans riled up. But well, I do not care, I'll stand by my opinion. Well to be fair, it was pretty much somewhat beta. Although it's not really beta. So I should be a bit more fairer. Although I will not be fair to those who say that Skyward Sword should not have Motion Plus and think the controls should have been replicated on Classic Controller to those I say fuck you you're all morons because honestly though defeating the old object defeating the old point of the game the whole object of having motion controls. Holy shit, that's an awesome idea. But in all seriousness, that's the intent of the game to have one. Ah, uh, however you say that one colon one thingy. I never figured out how. In fact, it works, and there's some really interesting puzzles. Be made of it, and yeah, I re also speaking of Skyward Sword, I really disagree with all the hate it is getting. Although, super fair, this is Zelda Cycle, 
I mean, they wanted... The fans wanted Ocarina of Time, so they got Ocarina of Time on the 3DS. Guess what? Oh, it fucking sucks. It's a bad remake. Seriously, this is the only time I ever agree with Jim Sterling. Really, and I do not like that guy. And don't go up here, it's a trap. I mean, I do not like Jim Sterling one stop. Full stop, I mean. Well, ever since I... Well, the reason... Why well, I do not like him... It's kind of... Will kind of make me sound like a Sonic fag, to be fair. But... Ever since I've read his Sonic Colors review, I just do not like the guy. I mean, really... That review was so dreadful. Hey, but I really like how Sega owned him though. By sending him the poster of the gate of the version of Sonic Colors, he himself launched scathing attacks on. I must admit, I really love that Sega. That is pretty funny. But then again, they've been pretty ballsy lately. I mean, I mean, do I dare bring up the signpost in the Sonic Generations? And they. And they had a fan service scene in Valkyria Chronicles 2, which tor tortured one of my favourite LPRs, which is pretty funny. Major Knight 404, watch him now, he is good. Really good. But back to Jim Stone. Like, I, that review was f so filled with troll language. I mean, like, really. Was it, was it supposed to be professional? Because he launches absolute bullshit about the game. After stuff he says. Not even flaws to be in with. And it sounds like nitpicking. Hey, even Sonic Retro called him out. And yet, by all I like Sonic 4, and I enjoyed it, except for the last boss, which is a cheap piece of shit. Mad Gear's boss can also go fuck itself. Well, I enjoyed Sonic 4. I'm sorry, but if you think there's nothing wrong with being able to slowly walk up a, a vertical shaft while not being impeded by a hill, then there's something seriously wrong with you. If you think nothing's wrong with walking up a vertical incline, then seriously, like I said, there's something seriously wrong with you. Really, that game, the physics don't bother me that much, in all honesty. But good lord. The only time the physics have ever bothered me is where it is Mad Gear's boss. Where half the time you'll bounce off, where in the pinch mode, where you bounce off one of the eggs his clones come out of. And. Or sometimes you'll hit him and bounce into a Eggman clone. How long have I, been, have I actually been recording? I mean, Jesus Christ! I've, I was gonna, intending to do this, doing this part in a completely separate video, but oh, well, I think I might cut it during recording. Well, during editing, I mean, if it's too big. But anyway, you've got the power glove. And then some of that detail, detail I actually really like, which was sadly removed in the GBA version, is that Link's hands change colour when he gets one of the gloves. Which I like. GBA removed it, removed it for some godforsaken reason. Don't know why. But I kind of see why, because it's kind of glitchy. Unless it's on MR, because usually when you go in the map, well, it's usually when you go in the map, Link's, the colour on Link's hands disappear. 
back to Flash Color. I'm not sure if this happened on real hardware. And he's now perched in midair. Lol. Oh, it's probably because of emulation, because there's actually a bug. A small weird power glitch that you can actually do with a bunny. But anyway, thanks to the power glove, we now picked this up. And interestingly, you may notice this, that in last dungeon, no, in the dungeon, there was actually, even though there was multiple floors in the map, oh, to be fair, I didn't show the map, there was no path to the first floor. Well, it eluded me for some time as a kid. Well, it's actually behind that middle entrance in the palace. And you can still get you through there. All I'll say about Jim Sterling is that I really want to do a commentary on his rant on classic games. Although, to be fair, I'm a bit worried that I'm going to miss the entire point of the rant. But, he just said something so bloody vague. I kind of see his point, though. How many people say classic games were good back then, even though some of them were bad. But I have to problem, he sounds like people were defending bad games. Kind of implies that all classic games suck just because of about five bad games even though the same could be said about modern gaming it's just some of his points are just so vague and I feel like doing another small Rant about professional viewers. Game Informer, their view on Sonic Generations was bad, but I think I will honestly say it, their review of GoldenEye is worse. Like, half the problem the N64, their review on the Wii GoldenEye, is that the viewer implies kind of sounds like a graphic saw. And something even more heinous, he makes out the little blur of that effect when you reload out to be worse than it actually is. Apparently, he makes it really blurry. Yeah, it blurs a little bit. I mean, really, how is that going to obstruct your punished people who reload often? And how the hell does it stop you from lining up your shot? I mean, seriously, what the fuck? Tim Turry is a fucking moron. I am really sorry. But he's just too stupid to be a reviewer. Although, too far, I can say the same thing about X-Pay. But, oh boy. But if I keep going, I'll end up ranting and ranting and ranting. And I really don't want to. But Some professional viewers just really piss me off. IGN's not bad, but they do have their own super moments. Hey, they even got Scottish Duck riled up, pissed off, over their night review of Night Into Dreams. And that's because they said, complained about the black loading screen that appears before it loads a certain cutscene. Basing their view on that, basing one of their complaints on that screen. And Scottish Stuck is normally quite critical of certain games. He isn't afraid to show his opinion. Ah, oh, fuck. And I keep missing. Now watch how fast I'm going to kill these things. Remember, I hit two of them. Already. And I'm out of magic power. Wow, so I'm not going to show off. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, my God. 
Anyway, they're actually very susceptible to the ice rod. Two hit blasts with it will kill them. But now, because I'm absolutely horrible at aiming, I have to do it the normal way. The long, tedious way. But I've got a head start on these two of them on the motors. And it's projectiles in the pier. Okay. That was weird. And we got the pen pen and the wisdom. Bob on the subject of Sonny Hedgehog. Well, it's Sega in general. Sonic has, oh, well, Sonic Generations, I mean, has lived up to the hype, I will honestly say. Both versions are worth a try, in my opinion, but Jeep, the 3DS version is inferior, in my opinion. Just because, well, both ones have their own flaws. The console ones are over. Before they've even been. No, they're over just too soon. While the 3DS version manages to be, be even more sure. How? But anyway, I think I'll end this video right off right here because I think it's going to be been really, really long. <laughs> it's probably going to be a beast in size. But next time we're actually going to, going to get the flippers. See you next time.